I loved it. Um, I thought it was very clever and that uh, the, advertise, the ad at the end was a kind of coda that allowed, it, it allowed you to, to uh, rewrite the end in whatever way you wanted to interpret the end of the story the way you wanted it to and you could have the, the, your version of Don Draper, whichever one satisfied your narrative. I mean, you directed an episode of this particular season. Um, did you know at the time how the story was going to end? I had the opportunity uh, to read uh, episodes 12, 13 and 14, but I didn't want to. I, I wanted to watch the end of the show the way I had watched the first two seasons. So I... I turned down the opportunity to read those scripts and uh, you, you'd hear little rumors and stuff uh, about s ideas that were being floated and some of them happened and, and quite a few of them didn't because uh, the story was in flux towards the end but um, yeah, I, I wanted to experience it the way I'd experienced it originally so I'd be sat on the edge of my seat wondering what was going to happen and you know like we were saying earlier the uh, that, that opening shot of Don Draper behind the wheel of the car looking like someone out of the Wacky Races or Mad Max was just fantastic. I think it was sticking a lot of people's minds. Now, what really stood out as well is the fact that, you know, Don Draper came full circle. Many of those around him, with one or two exceptions, had a very upbeat ending to their story. Unlike your character, do you feel a bit uh, upset right. by that? Uh, no, I... Uh, I, I wasn't there in the beginning, so it was perfectly fair that I wasn't there at the end. And also, um, you know, I, the, the way that he, he wrote me off the show was so dramatic. Uh, and I wouldn't have been nominated if, if he hadn't have written me out that way. So, you know, I, I, it was at the time when he told me that was what was going to happen, I had conflicting feelings about it. Because on the one hand, from a, a, an actor's point of view I could see it as this incredible opportunity I was very excited by it but from a life experience point of view I know I knew at the time that this was a very very rare uh, set of circumstances and that I wasn't going to walk off the set of Mad Men and find this experience somewhere else again but you didn't walk away you came back to direct I mean how did that happen and you ended up directing one of the most iconic episodes as well of the final season which mirrored some of the ones that you've been in earlier? That was complete uh, serendipity. I, I was supposed to do an episode in the first half of, the se of se uh, season seven but I was doing a movie, I was doing Poltergeist up in Toronto and that had, uh, we, were, we were going over so I wasn't able to to do the pre-production so he bumped me to the second half and I just ended up with that particular episode but it was a fantastic episode because it had all these sort of strange resonances to uh, the last episode of uh, season three shut the door and have a seat how important is sort of understanding the style the tone when it comes to making Mad Men? very important and I think that's the reason why he trusted me with it uh, and it was an incredible uh, act of faith that he had I mean you know, it was, it was like he, he let me drive his sort of custom design 1969 sports car for, for two weeks and uh, trusted me not to put any dings or dents in it, you know. But um, the, uh, the, everyone who's been walking on, working on the show for the seven seasons, they know what the show is and you know what it isn't. And my responsibility chiefly was, I, I, I'm not going to tell John Hamm, I have got no insights into his character that he doesn't have and it would be insulting of me to even suggest something like that. Um, my responsibility was to, to remind them of the narrative because I had the script for three or four weeks before they got it, they got it the day before and I've read it 50 times and they've read it twice so m my job was, to, was just about story, constantly to, to focus on the story. And looking back now across those seven seasons, what is the legacy of Mad Men? I mean, arguably it's changed television. I think that long form uh, uh, drama, scripted drama was, was almost gone. I mean, after The Sopranos, there wasn't a lot of it around. And suddenly, um, you know, you've got it on Netflix, you've got it on Amazon, people are hungry for it. Um, you're not, that desire is not really being fed in the cinemas any longer and um, that, that desire for that kind of nuanced entertainment and storytelling is being supplied through television so um, and in, you know in some ways it's almost replaced the novel you know intriguing Jared Harris it's been fantastic to talk to you thanks for joining us thank you